Should Stuart Haas Racing stick with Ford in 2025? A topic that is going to be talked about a bunch this season during the 2024 season is what Stuart Haas Racing's future is in terms of manufacturers. At the end of the 2024 season, their contract with Ford is up. So throughout the season, they're going to be negotiating, whether that's to stay with Ford or move to another manufacturer. But when you look at it, Ford might just be the best place for them. And from a number standpoint, when you take a look at it, they have 36 wins as a company when they were underneath that Chevy banner. They spent eight seasons with the Bowtie family, 36 wins. Underneath the Ford banner, they have 33 wins in seven seasons. Total number of wins, 69 nice. But when you look at it strictly from a win standpoint, they're pretty even. And I know there's a ton of fans out there that will say that Stuart Haas Racing performed better when they were a Chevy team, when they had that alliance with Hendrick Motorsports. And I don't necessarily agree. They got two championships out of that. It seemed like as a company, they potentially ran better. But strictly from a wins standpoint, we're pretty split down the middle here, all things considered. And now when they've been with Ford and especially last season in 2023, they went winless as a company in the cup series for the first time ever. It was incredibly frustrating to watch. At some points, it didn't look like SHR could drive a hot nail through a snowman. It looked painful for Rodney Childers and those guys out there trying to get those cars to go faster. And honestly, I don't know what the solution is because it's not like Rodney Childers isn't a good crew chief. It's not like they don't have smart people over there. They're just missing something. They showed some signs here and there being good. They got the pole at Martinsville. They almost won Talladega in the fall with Kevin Harvick, which would have been vacated either way because his car was deemed illegal. But at the end of the day, they just didn't perform, but they weren't terrible in the grand scheme of things. So I don't know what the solution is for them. Maybe they need to sacrifice an old person like this is midsummer. Don't recommend that, but they could probably find a better way to do that by just hiring better engineers or just trying to figure out exactly what is going on here. Tony Stewart has said that he spent more time at the shop this offseason, and he's gone a little bit Logan Roy on everybody in recent weeks, blaming everyone around him except for himself, it seems like which he's right. He doesn't set up the cars. He's not the one driving the cars. He's not telling the crew chiefs what uh, what adjustments to make. So realistically, I understand where he's coming from. It's just a weird move as a potential leader to do that. So when you look at where they could go in 2025, there's options, right? There's three manufacturers in the NASCAR Cup Series. You have Ford, who they're already with, and you have Chevy, who they were previously with, and then you have Toyota, who Tony Stewart famously left Joe Gibbs Racing after one year in a Toyota. So I don't think they're going back there unless... You know, Toyota dumps, dumps a boatload of cash right in front of their door, which I feel like is what Ford did. That's why they went there. Not feel like. That's what Ford did. So right now, if you look at this list right here of all of the tiers of the Ford family, right now on that tier one team. So tier one is a factory supported team. So they're getting everything from Ford. They get sim time. They get the top, you know, engine program. They get all of the feedback that the manufacturer could possibly give to them. They're getting the most support from the factory. And right now in the Ford camp, you essentially have three tier one teams. You have Stuart Haas Racing, Team Penske, one of the last two NASCAR Cup Series championships, as well as Roush Fenway Kozlowski, who saw a big resurgence in 2023. They're looking to have an even bigger year in 2024. You move down to that tier two stature, which they don't get priority in the sim. They don't get all of the same feedback. They don't get all of the same resources that the tier one does. You have front row motorsport, again, race winners last year, as well as the Wood Brothers. So, all of the Wood Brother cars for Harrison Burton, that 21 team, they're all prepped out of the Team Penske shop. So essentially, it's just a Ford Penske car, but just for the sake of this, I'm setting them at Tier 2 because that's realistically where they're at. And then in Tier 3, you have Rick Ware Racing, who's, again, trying to move up that tier list by a partnership with Roush Fenway Keselowski in 2024, hiring Justin Haley, but for now, they're Tier 3. When you look at it, SHR is a Tier 1 team. Now, if they re-up with Ford, do they stay as a Tier 1, or do they maybe get knocked down to a Tier 1.5 or Tier 2? That remains to be seen. But for right now, they're Tier 1. And if you're going in and negotiate, that's where you want to be. You want to have that Tier 1 status. Now, if you move over and you take a look at what they're doing on the Chevy side of things, and everybody's like, oh, they need to go back to Chevy, sell the team to Dale Jr., 
That's super frustrating. That's not going to happen. Dale doesn't have $80 million to just plop down to buy half of the team or anything like that. But when you look at it from a tier standpoint on the Chevy side, your tier one is Hendrick Motorsports. Everybody knows that Hendrick is the Don of the Chevy camp. Everybody has to go kiss the ring. Ross Chastain had to do it. Justin Marks had to do it. Everybody has to do it at some point or another. Hendrick Motorsports is that number one team. Nobody's knocking them off of that pedestal unless they want to leave themselves. And why would they? They're getting all of the resources that they could possibly want from General Motors. So you have a tier one and a half because I don't think that they're necessarily a tier two uh, team level in the Chevy camp, at least not amongst these, you have Trackhouse and you have Richard Childers Racing. Justin Marks has said that they are a full factory back team from General Motors. Again, they're fast, they're winning races, they're not Hendrick Motorsport though. So that's why I set them at tier one and a half. And same with Richard Childers Racing. They have a long time history with General Motors, with Chevrolet. They're always going to be just a step below Hendrick, but they'll never be a tier two or really even tier three team realistically, um, with Chevy going forward. And then you have your tier two is what I consider, which might actually be closer to a tier three if we really wanted to break this down. Tier two is likely your Spire Motorsports, which it makes a lot of sense. They have strong ties to Hendrick. They just don't necessarily have all the speed that Hendrick Trackhouse or RCR does at the moment. And then you have Colleg, who I would argue might be like a tier two and a half. They're not a full factory back team by any means, but they do have speed on road courses because they have a road course ace and Justin Allgaier, or Justin Allgaier, AJ Allmendinger, that can go out there and win races for them. And then you have JTG Doherty Racing, who obviously did win the Daytona 500 last year, but they are certainly not receiving the same resources that these other teams are either. Then you move over to the Toyota camp. And realistically, I don't see Stuart Haas Racing switching over to Toyota. But in the Toyota camp, everybody seems to be created and treated equally, at least now. Obviously, back when Furniture Row was around, they might be getting the same resources. But then you have Joe Gibbs coming in here and absolutely annihilating them and making sure that they can never really climb up to that number one spot within the team. Now, Joe Gibbs Racing, 2311 Racing, basically get the same resources. They have the same speed. They all work together. That's essentially a six-car team, if we're being completely honest. They just added in Legacy Motor Club for the 2024 season, and Cal Wells, the CEO and president over at, uh, at Legacy now, said that the reason they left Chevy is because Chevy made Legacy a tier three team. They weren't getting any resources. It just wasn't being, they weren't a priority over there. Said so moving over to Toyota, they're getting those tier one resources. So we just have to assume that Legacy is tier one as well. They're getting the same engines, they're getting the same support from the factory that Joe Gibbs Racing and 2311 are getting, which is great for them. So when you look at it, you're like, well, where could Stuart Haas Racing fit in at? That is a big company. That is a four-car team, four chartered cars, somewhat big-name drivers, big-time owner, really good crew chiefs. Where do they fit in at? And realistically, the only spot for them to go is to stay with Ford. And I think that's the best place for them, honestly, going forward. It gives them the best opportunity to get the most resources. Ford will eventually right the ship, right? And we see this happen all the time in NASCAR. It's an ebb and a flow and all racing in general. And this is what's happening to SHR right now. They're on the down. They're really down. I mean, they're like in the gutter being left out at Christmas like their Kevin McAllister level of down at the moment. But that's going to come back up at some point. And with Team Penske and RFK running well, that can only continue to try to lift them. Unless, of course, they already know that they're on their way out and Forge is not giving them any sort of resources anymore. But when you look at it, where are they going to go? Tony Stewart, I don't think he's going to Toyota. There were a lot of rumblings back when back when Joe Gibbs Racing switched to Toyota that he didn't want to be there anymore. And he only won one race, which was that Talladega Fall race driving a Toyota. There's a good chance he could have won the Daytona 500 that year too. And it looks, I know he didn't, but you can make a case that he just, you know, kind of got out of the way and didn't win that race. I just don't think he wants to go to Toyota and you can draw whatever conclusions you want from that. Unless, of course, Tony Stewart's a businessman now. So unless Toyota came and just dumped a whole bunch of cash on his on, on the doorstep of the SHR shop, I don't think they're going. Plus, for Toyota, they just added in two more cars. They're now an eight-car team, essentially an eight-car tier one team. Uh, I don't know how many more resources they want to put into, you know, taking on 50% more cars. You know, being up to a 12-car tier one team, that's a lot. I mean, and maybe that's what's happening at Ford right now. 
because they already are a 5-9-9 nine, nine car tier 1 team. Throw in, you know, the new Stage 60 program, and if you want to throw in the 21 car as well, you're looking at 11 cars that they're going to have to prep for, you know, getting all of the resources that a full factory-backed outfit gets. So maybe that's what's happening there. But Chevy certainly isn't going to bring Stuart Haas Racing in and make them a Tier 1 team. They could potentially make them a Tier 1.5 team. But when it comes down to it, Chevy is probably supporting more cars than anybody else at this point, at least from a higher level of competition standpoint. So I don't know what they're going to try to slot in with the track house and the RCRs of the world. It doesn't seem like Chevy would necessarily make room for them uh, at that. They could maybe be a tier two team, take less resources and just be back underneath the brand. But again, this is a program that is built around being a tier one program, which isn't bad. Just not sure where they're going to go at the end of the day. So let me know in the comments, where do you think Stuart Haas Racing ends up at in 2025? Are they going to remain with the Blue Oval family? Do they move over to Chevy? Do they potentially move over to Toyota? They could always sell a charter or two, which could make them more enticing to another organization, manufacturer, at least. I just don't think that's going to happen, especially as we continue to talk about charters and the uncertainty around that. So let me know in the comments, where do you think they end up at? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter, at Break Hard Blog.